Hi, welcome to the Curiouser. In the previous video, I showed you how to make 3D printer enclosure with a ventilation system. One of the important elements of such enclosure is a fan that helps to circulate the air to keep your room free of plastic particles. The effectiveness of the ventilation really depends on two things, performance of the fan and how the duct is laid out. In this video, I'll talk about how the fan performs under different conditions. This is my enclosure that I have built previously which has a fan and the duct connected to the window. And when I turn on the fan, the air will flow through this way out the window. So the stronger the fan is, the internal pressure of the enclosure will be lower, which is better to prevent the air inside with plastic smell from escaping to your room. This fan in particular is advertised as a 100 CFM fan. However, this airflow rate may not be actual flow rate you will get when you install it. This is because when the fan is connected to the duct, for example, as the fan tries to blow the air out through the duct, the friction between the air and duct surface will make it harder to push the air through. In other words, because of this friction, more pressure is developed at the outtake of the fan, and fan will have harder time to push the air. For a quick demonstration, I got these two affordable inline fan made by Vivason from Amazon. The first one is 100 CFM fan with 4 inch diameter, and the second one is 240 CFM with 6 inch diameter. I'm going to measure flow rate of these fan with different lengths of the duct connected to it. To do that, I use this anemometer for a rough measurement of the flow rate. Please note that the way I measure the flow rate in this video is not going to be 100% accurate. What I want to show is the relative impact of the performance of the fan with different settings. So I think this should be enough for our purpose. Let's start some measurement. I started measuring on the 4 inch fan. The nanometer I used had a built in averaging function. So I turned it on and then moved it around the duct in order to average out the different flow profiles. Then I converted the air velocity to flow rate based on the cross sectional area of the duct. When nothing was connected to this fan, the flow rate was measured at 53 CFM. And when 77 cm duct is attached, the flow rate decreased to 41 CFM. When 187 cm duct is connected, it became just 31 CFM. And this is the summary of the measurement with 4 inch fan. My 6 inch fan was measured at 212 CFM without the duct which is quite close to their advertised number of 240 CFM. When the 77cm duct is connected, the flow rate became 208 CFM. And when the longest duct is connected, it became 178 CFM. And this is the summary for 6 inch fan. I was curious what will happen when the 4 inch duct is connected to this 6 inch fan. So I designed the simple 4 inch to 6 inch duct adapter with the Fusion 360 and printed with my CL10 Mini. I connected to the 6 inch fan and did the same measurement again. When this fan is connected to the adapter, the flow rate dramatically decreases down to 74 CFM. And the flow rate with medium size of the duct and the longest duct became 41 CFM and 36 CFM. This is summary of the 6 inch fan with 4 inch duct. And this is the summary of all the measurements so far. Now I want to see what will actually happen when I connect this fan to my enclosure. Ok, I connect this 4 inch fan to my duct and close the door of my enclosure. Because my enclosure has just a small inlet at the bottom here, as the fans try to suck the air out of the enclosure, the internal pressure will become lower. And as I mentioned earlier, because of the friction from the duct surface, the pressure will increase at the output of the fan. This means the fan now need to overcome even more pressure difference across the fan to blow the air out. So this will contribute negatively to fan's performance. Let's see how good this fan does the job. The flow rate with this fan was measured at only 24 CFM. Now, I replaced it with 6 inch fan with a 4 inch duct. Let's do the same measurement with this fan. The flow rate with 6 inch fan with 4 inch duct was measured at 41 CFM. 
And this is the summary of all the measurement. As you can see, the fan performs very differently under different settings. However, some of the high-end fans have more detailed information of how the fan performs under different conditions. As an example, I found this engineering specification chart from Vortex fan website. The y-axis shows the static pressure when the fan is tested, and the x-axis shows the measured flow rate at the corresponding static pressure. Different color of the curves indicate the different model of the fan. As you can see, different fan has a different profile of the performance. If you look at S800 model, it starts as almost 700 CFM at zero static pressure. But as the static pressure increases to 1.3 inch water gauge, the flow rate decreases down to 450 CFM. Interestingly though, if you look at S1000 model, it starts from 1100 CFM. But at the static pressure below 1.3 inch water gauge, the fan performs pretty much similar as S800 model. So these types of information can be more useful for specific application than just mentioning one CFM number. Of course, if you are not really worried about precise performance of the fan, it's totally okay to find the fan you need by trying it out on your setup. But it's important to keep in mind that the fan with the same CFM number doesn't really mean they will perform equally in the same condition. As one more example, this types of computer case fan which is advertised as the same 100 CFM as my 4 inch inline fan is not really suitable for my application because this type of fan simply doesn't have enough power to push the air through the long duct while overcoming static pressure from my enclosure. Anyway, after the trial, I decided to use 6 inch fan with 4 inch duct with the adapter on my enclosure because 4 inch duct was less bulky than 6 inch duct and the fan was powerful enough for my purpose. As you can see here, while the fan is running, my acrylic front cover stays as close because of the low pressure inside. And I could feel the slight force that enclosure tries to pull the front door. So I'm quite satisfied with this fan. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are interested in building this type of 3D printer enclosure with negative pressure technique, please check out the previous video on my channel. If you like to watch this type of video, please subscribe it or click like button below. Thanks for watching.